Hey everybody, so I want to talk about scriptable objects because I don't like them, and I catch a fair amount of flack for that. I'd like to talk about why. About four years ago I loved scriptable objects, but since then prefabs have gotten really, really good, and anything that a scriptable object can do, a prefab can do better. Let's go ahead and talk about it. Here we've got an inventory, and it's got a link to a whole bunch of inventory items, and this is one of the things that you'd use scriptable objects for, right? Your inventory items, you want an asset for sword, and an asset for dagger, and an asset for potion, and an asset for apples, and you can link to those from your inventory, and they're just data objects. They don't contain any, any display code or physics code or any of that. So you have a nice separation between your display and your data. Great, but you can create data prefabs that aren't intended to ever be instantiated. It's, there's no reason you can't. So that's what I've done. Apples. Would you look at that? It's actually inside of the cooking prefab. And right now on the screen, you can see two things that scriptable objects can't do. First off, you can't nest them. You can't put one scriptable object inside of another. You can link them, but then you've got two separate assets and there's no visible line between them. So you can't, if I was creating these as scriptable objects, apples, chicken, butter, plus three sword, those would be all separate assets in another directory from the cooking object, and they would be connected via invisible lines, and you'd have to remember whether or not the cooking inventory was correctly hooked up to various items, and if you create a new cooking item, you have to remember to hook it up to the cooking inventory so that the cooking inventory can properly give you random cooking items or whatever. That's a lot of room for error. It makes way more sense to just use the fact that it's a game object to put it inside of another game object. Not only have I reduced the number of free-floating assets and random directories, but I've also created the connections that I need in a way that I can never misunderstand. These are always going to be cooking objects, and the fact that there's a plus three sword in here might seem strange, but I know it's a cooking-related object because it's in the cooking prefab. And there's nothing limiting me from linking to these data objects from anywhere. So I can have a goblin carrying around this plus three demon slaying sword just by having the goblin's inventory link to this. And I can have the player buy it from shops. It doesn't leave the cooking inventory because it's just data. It's, it doesn't contain anything that gets instantiated. It's just a reference for, uh, for anyone, anyone to point to. But because I'm using prefabs, I can nest them. And that makes it very easy for me to tell what the core relationship is between these items and these larger collections of items. You could probably do something similar with directories, but now you're talking about creating a cooking object and putting a cooking directory underneath it, uh, you know, in the same directory as it, and then using the cooking object to scan the cooking directory. Wow, that sounds really a lot harder than saying get components in children item. So... To me, this is a much better approach for the times when you need to do this. Obviously, you don't want to always do this, but it is better than having a whole bunch of loose leaf items in this case. And there are other things that this is doing that are impossible with scriptable objects, and you're looking at it right here. You can't staple a scriptable object to a, script, to a scriptable object. They are not, they're not going to be able to do that because there's no game object. But when you have a mono behavior, you can put any number of mono behaviors on the same game object as another mono behavior. So how many descendants from your item class do you have? Have you got like a, a, a potion item class, a weapon item class, an armor item class? And then you know if you go further, you still have to define exactly what they do. So you've got like maybe a scripting language where you can say strength plus five in text and then it gets parsed. Or maybe you've got like a giant list of effects in some kind of array where you you're filling it out by by pressing you know one more on the on the inspector and then painstakingly working it out that's like a lot of work it makes way more sense to just drop it in as more classes on the same prefab like this i've got this mix and stat boost it adds five to my intellect i've got this mix and stat boost it decreases strength too so the item, when I, when I execute the item, it just says, hey, can you get me all of my mixins and uh, just run them? And there, it just works. I don't have to worry about whether or not these mixins uh, have been properly typed. I don't have to worry about whether or not they're in another directory or what's going on there. If this was scriptable objects, I'd either have to have like um, a whole bunch of undifferentiated structs to try and get all of the various effects listed in the scriptable object, or I would have to have uh, like a text-based parser, 
or I would have to have links to other scriptable objects, and all three of those are just a mess. So it makes much more sense to just staple them in like this. But just because you can doesn't mean you have to. This can still do all of the things scriptable objects can do. I can link to other prefabs from this prefab. If I wanted to, I could very easily have these as separate prefabs and then link the item to them. It wouldn't make much sense in this case, but for example, if you've got a goblin running around, you could drop in like a sword mix-in. But if you, want, if you want that sword to be a specific sword, like this one, you can just have the goblin refer to this sword. And then if the player steals it, the player gets this sword. So you can still do all of the things that scriptable objects can do. But you can also use nesting, and you can also use mix-ins. So this is something that is some, this is core to virtually everything I develop. There's just no reason for me to ever use scriptable objects. Even if you're not interested in data objects, this is still more powerful than scriptable objects in a, in a lot of fun ways. For example, in the original versions of, uh, of my um, galactic line, I would have to simulate ships over long periods of time, like months and years. And there might be thousands of ships that I need to simulate. So what do you do? Do you pull those ships into the game world and then simulate them? That would be a pain in the butt, it would be slow, and it would require a lot of RAM churning. No, I leave them as prefabs, but then I can go into that ship prefab, and I can say, can you find all of your components that do stuff? And I will go ahead and just look at those do stuff components and, uh, and simulate them. I never have to spawn the ship at all. All I have to do is keep track of some basic raw resource information uh, in, a, in, a, in a, you know, a universal directory somewhere. So I don't have to worry about spawning those ships in, but if I need to, I can. And all of their various prefabs pop into existence, their engine nacelles turn on, you get their nice visuals, the level of detail stuff just works. But it doesn't screw up my attempt to simulate them fast while they're not visible. You could have, like, a ship, uh, ship object that's for display and a ship object that's for data, but then you have to remember that they're linked up and it becomes more difficult to keep track of what's what. In some cases, the data objects make sense as being linked to the display in a very tight manner. It's not, not always the best, but sometimes it's what you need for your game. And if you do that, remember that you can access all of those fields without instantiating the item in question. So if you have a goblin enemy, in your invent in, in your as as a prefab here in your in, pointing to the screen like you can see it here in the inventory you you've got your goblin and it's a prefab with a with a full 3D model in it and it's got all the animation information you don't have to turn that on you don't have to, you don't have to instantiate that and put that into the scene you can just go in and check what the goblin's max health is without ever instantiating it at all that's a very very powerful tool and that's something that you used to get with scriptable objects but now you can get just any time Unity's come a long way, and uh, I don't see very many reasons to use scriptable objects. Um, also, if you've got thousands and thousands of assets, uh, that data assets, think about using a database rather than a giant stack of assets, regardless of whether they're prefabs or scriptable objects. At some point, it becomes too many. Anyway, thanks for your time.